talk about the NBA. So someone just stole your jersey. Yeah. What in the hell happened? Um, they had a girl came up to me saying that, uh, you my role model, you my biggest fan. Um, can I take a picture with you? Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, what happened was I put my jersey on the on the counter and she stole it. Oh, she stole it. Yeah. Uh, was then, it a signed jersey? Nah, it was from Cole Anthony off his back though. DNA oh, jersey. Okay. And uh, called me, called called us after that and tried to sell it back to you. <laughs> Yo, the nerve of some people. <laughs> they go sent, steal the shit and sell it back to you. How much then, you want for it? Then I got the. Okay, how, how much you want? I think like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. And then she say, "Well, okay, you gonna have to give me a feature for this." A feature. <laughs> and like, bro, like this was some of the most crooked. And I was nice enough to take a picture with the bitch. And uh, then she first she she just was getting caught up in lies. First she said I dropped it. Then she said that uh, I gave it to her friend to take the picture. And I'm, then she said they got put out with the, she couldn't give it back because they got put out for twerking. And the thing, it, it was just buku lies, bro. So I found the video with me taking a, taking a picture with her and my jersey on the ground. And when I turned to the side, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you after, after the interview. Okay. She pulls my jersey. So you have the footage of it. Yeah. After that, she she went on rambling on Instagram, putting uh adding all of the shade rooms and all that. Oh, so she she wanted some clout off. It. Yeah, it was to it be was, a thief. Yeah, it was a clout move, and you know, uh, I got I found out she was some kind of fuck with trick, trick daddy. So I, me and trick got on the phone. Trick like I'm uh, go go over there right now and get your jersey. So I was I sent my people over there and they went and got my jersey from me. Yeah. Trick's a good dude, man. I just interviewed in Miami a couple weeks yeah, ago. I appreciate he, he's Trick. solid. Yeah, he's I appreciate solid. Trick, man. Trick, yeah. go way back. Yeah, man. I, I love Trick Daddy. Me and him go back during the DVD days, but back back when you and I met, yeah, around that time, he's always been solid. He's always been solid. And it's interesting, I remember. Then she posted what I DM'd her. I'm like, man. Yeah, I remember I was just on Drink Champs, right? By the time this comes out, it's going to drop. And I remember one of the questions, Nori, you know, because Nori has a little drinking games at the end. And he said, uh, respect or, or loyalty? And I said, I said, respect. Because loyalty, to me, isn't, isn't a real concept. You know what I'm saying? Like, loyalty is something that you have to work on every day with somebody. You know, a person going to be loyal. Because a person, I feel like humans, they reciprocate. You yeah. can't expect for a person just to be loyal just forever right, right. based on something you've done for them 10 years ago. Right. They'll, they'll find a and reason certain to be... people are loyal to certain people. Exactly. Respect stays. Respect stays, right? Yeah. And the story I told was the interview I just did with Trick Daddy, right? So Trick Daddy, when he got his first million dollar check, you know, he, he told Ted Lucas, don't give me the money. I want you to cut a bunch of $20,000 checks to all my people, you know, all the people that helped me come up when I was hustling and everything else like that. And one of the dudes who he cut the, a check to, who he had been taking care of and everything else like that, when he came back to his hood, the dude told him that he ain't, he ain't allowed there no more. He, he ain't allowed to come back to that hood no more, to that, that particular basketball court they was playing at. Trick was so hurt that he went to his car and got his gun and pulled out the gun on the dude and said, your daddy got killed up this street from someone came back and killed him. Your brother got killed down this street from someone came back and killed him. I'm coming back and I'm gonna kill you right now. And I'm gonna call your grandmother and tell her. And that motherfucker 
press charges on him, <laughs> sued him, got a restraining order. Every time he performed at a club, the guy would show up so he couldn't perform. He would go to court, the guy would show up so he'd have problems working the courtroom. The dude who I got, the dude who pressed charges on me, that, that, I, thought it was my, I, I thought it was my friend. Damn. We had did a lot of shit together. We had spent a lot of time together. And it was all over a basketball game. It was all over the fact that a lot of times you have to be, when you're in this business and you're in any type of business where there's money involved, you have to be careful of who you're dealing with in life because people think when your business blow up, y'all business blew up. Mm. People think when you made it, we made it. We made it. That's why I always tell the young athletes, NBA, NFL, I don't care what you do, be careful. Everybody's some kidding, you ain't family. Be careful how you move. Be careful how you talk. Be careful how you dress. Be careful how you go around them. Had I pulled up around him in a raggedy old car, not looking good, not feeling good, he probably think, oh yeah, he's still one of me. If I hear him tell me, I'm barred off the park, I can't come back. I'm the terror in this motherfucking neighborhood. What you mean I can't come back? When I got in the car, I realized I had my gun on me. I was like, well, that ain't nothing but God. So I told my cousin, I said, ride around the park. When we got back around the park, he he said, um, man, fuck that shit, bro. You got too much loot. I was like, stop this bitch. Man, I'm not stopping. I reached and I grabbed the motherfucking stern on um, the shift, stick shift out of his hand. Boo, that bitch. Before that bitch stopped good, I was out that motherfucker. Yeah. And what really hurt him was the things I said to him. His brother and daddy had got up. His brother and his daddy on different times, different occasions, within a quarter mile from each other, got an altercation with somebody that came back to kill them. So once he called me pussy and flaw and I can't come back, once he tried to hit me in the face with the ball when I wasn't looking, I told him, I came back to kill you like that nigga came back to kill your brother. I came back to kill you like that nigga came back and killed your daddy over there. And you bet not cry before you die. Because you tried me like I was a fuck nigga and I showed you nothing but love, dog. I said, one tear drop on the barrel of this pistol while I jam this bitch in your nose and blow your brains out. And I don't want nobody, I'm going I'm to call your grandma and I'm going to tell her what I just did. I don't want nobody to call her. I got, when I got in the car, I was like, why the fuck did you do that? Why the fuck did you say that? I was hurt. I thought you was my friend. You went to jail when you was in college. I helped you. I coached you through it. You needed a girl. I put you down with my sister in college. You already, you already talked to my stepsister. I put you down with my other sister in college, and my stepsister don't even know I did this. And now, just because I'm selling records and I, I, got, I got a nice house and nice cars, now I'm, I can't come back on the park no more? I ain't, come on, bro. I don't think I'm better than you. I got my first million dollars. I said that. I told Ted, don't give me that. I said, I, give me a piece of paper and a pen. I wrote down everybody that helped me sell that mother, that make that million dollars, everybody got 20 or 30,000 a piece. Wow. Every fucking body. Don't talk to me like that, bro. Don't, 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 don't do that shit to me. And then, got a restraining order on me. And every time I came to court, he stood by the elevator. When I get ready to walk in, he walk in. <laughs> and every time I went to a club, he came and I got to leave. When I caught my friends trying to do something to him, I said, please, if y'all do something to him, I'm going to prison. Just leave him alone, bro. I'm just going to stay out of his way. Then when I got the lawsuit, a lawsuit? He sued you. Damn. You sent me to jail and you sued me? Damn. Yeah. From that day on, I realized that money was the root of all evil, man. The, the shit that people would do to you or for you for some money. If they'll do it for you, they'll do it to you. 
This is what loyalty gets you sometimes. Someone who you think you're loyal to, who thinks is going to be loyal to you, they'll find a reason to fucking churn on you and try to take you for everything you got. Ooh. So I don't, I don't believe in loyalty like that. <laughs> That's my life. That's my life story. See what I'm talking about? Everybody who done this to me, I was loyal to. Right. You're going to be loyal to someone, but that, that's not going to be reciprocated. No. So, so fuck a loyalty, man. Just put in, expect to get out of a person what you put into that person. Yeah. That's, that's, a lot, that's something you can count on a lot more than loyalty.